Okay, so we're just going to continue on with these arms. So, one thing we actually missed was before we started creating these joints, what we will want to do is having this character in here is going to be quite annoying because it's going to get selected and it's going to get in the way and it's always going to be quite visible so we're going to have to keep like hiding polygons and things like that. So the best way to actually tackle this is if we just select the models group right click select hierarchy and again because everything we all the models we all put inside this model group so selecting the hierarchy is just going to select all the mesh in the scene of this character and over in the channel editor channel box editor or you can hit control A to toggle between the attribute editor and channel editor at the bottom is the layer editor so the first one's the display layers and if we go to the far right there's a button with a little blue circle and a little white square which is basically create a new layer with objects selected so because we've got all the models selected and the model group we're just going to click this to create a new layer and I'll double click and rename this mesh and I'll pick a black colour and basically this colour is the colour of the wireframe so I'll just hit save and if we turn on shading wireframe on shaded you can see now we've got that black uh, wireframe there and this just makes it really easy to just hide the entire mesh of the character by hitting the V so the first box is the visibility uh, the second box is templated or referenced so if we go into templated it just basically gives us a template we can see the wire mesh of the character but can't do anything with it can't select it and also vert snapping doesn't work on this mesh anymore when it's in templated mode so it's just there to just see the wireframe if we switch to reference however we can still vert snap to it but we can't select it and we can see the smooth shading so this is a good way that we can just see the, the full character but not have any influence over it so we'll be using this quite a bit just to hide and show the mesh and it's just a, a, a quick clean way and later on we're going to add things in here like the animation controls so if you start animating with this character the animator can quickly hide the controls and see how the animation is looking without all the rig in the way okay so we'll just hide the mesh and one thing we didn't cover in the previous lesson is the orientation of these joints so what I mean by orientation is if we get these joints and just get the rotate tool and start rotating and if we're in world mode we can see we've got the nice uh, rotate tool and if we start rotating so like in the x-axis if we come over to the channel editor we can actually see it's important values in rotate x, y and z so this isn't give, this isn't a true representation of the orientation of this joint rotating in x in the viewport isn't rotating in x in the actual joint so the reason for this is if we just go to the top view we can see that and if we double click the rotate tool or the tool button is in between the attribute editor and the channel editor at the top right hand corner so if we click that we can see that it's set to world space and this basically means the world space of the Maya scene file the Maya grid so wherever we rotate this you can see the actual manipulator isn't changing because it's sticking to world space so if we switch to gimbal, gimbal we can now see the true representation of the orientation of this joint so now we can see that actually X is slightly bent to the side and if we get so we can check these other joints now what we want to do is display the local rotative axes of these joints so a quick way to do this is if we select the top joint right click select hierarchy and all, all that's doing is when we select hierarchy it's just basically looking at every child object of what we've got selected so because we have the top joint selected it's going to select all these child, child joints and now what we'll do is go to display transform display and local rotative axes and again I'd recommend adding this to your shelf because we'll probably be using this quite a bit so just clicking this is going to show the actual 
rotation of these joints, the rotative axes of these joints. And one place in particular we want to check is these finger joints, because again these fingers are kind of like hinge joints. So you can see here, rota rotating down the Z axes, we can get quite a nice bend where we would expect those knuckles to be. So later on when we start rigging these fingers, because we made them all in a straight line, all these axes now line up. So when it comes to bending the finger, how we'd want to see it naturally, you can see how that's bending quite nice. So if by clicking the joints in like we clicked from the top view and then for these fingers we vert snapped to a straight curve. So we are basically limiting the amount of areas things can go wrong. So getting a proper approach at the start is going to make your life a lot easier. But if for instance if one of these joints wa was off there's ways you can correct it. So at the top if we switch to component mode and there's a little question mark icon on here which is sort of like miscellaneous items. So if we click that it now means we can select the local rotative axes of these joints. So you can see just dragging the selection we can see it turn yellow and this actually means we can go to the rotate tool and start rotating this. So it might not work in gimbal so I'm holding out E left click to go back to world mode on the rotate tool and you can see here how now we can just rotate that that axis of that joint so if in, for instance we had a joint like this you can see how there is no hinge there we'd expect it to rotate along the middle where the knuckle is but there is no axis aligning with that so if we were going to animate this or try rotate this with a regulator on we'd have to be rotating through quite a few axes to try and get that correct hinge movement whereas before with the correct orientation so I'm just hitting control Z to go back we can see that that's that's quite simple it's just it's already been set up so this is what we want and if these joints are ever in the wrong orientation we can use the go to skeleton or orient joint tool and just go to the option box and we'll just hit edit reset settings and it's always good practice just to reset the settings every now and again because if you're using the tool from previous projects it might have settings you've used before in a different case and it might not be applicable now so what you can use to do is just select the parent joint and you can set what orientations you want so for instance if we wanted it to the world we can reset that so now all these orientations are facing in world space or we can choose the default settings which are going to make it to, f to look down the axes of these joints so it's a good idea to just look over these joints and um, in my experience when you start adding IKs, start adding control curves and constraints later on a lot of this is ironed out so for instance um, these finger joints or the wrist control if the rotation of this wrist joint is off skew, it's a dodgy rotation then we make a control on orient joint, orient constraint to it which we'll explain later on but in a lot of cases it if the rotation's off it doesn't cause too many problems but it's always good to just make sure that we can set this up properly and especially with the fingers if we when we come to rigging these fingers later on because there's only one thing we have to rotate rotate Z we can pretty much ignore X and Y and just work on Z so it makes our lives a lot easier later on in life so one thing we'll do is just these end joints again when creating these joints they aim down the axis so all these X's the X axis is aiming down so th these end joints don't really have anything to aim to so I'm just going to select them and I'll just set this to orient joint to world and hit apply now with it, with it saying world it's not going to go to world space it just means that because he's a child of this other joint above it it's going to match its orientation so you can see now 
that it's, it's parallel with its parent joint. So that's how we'd, we'd expect the joints to be. So I'm just going to select the top joint. I'll, I'll just hit close. Uh, select the top joint. Left, right click, sorry, and go select hierarchy again. And just hit local rotate axes again, just to get rid of that. So w what we can do actually here, we've, we've changed the ro rotations of those end joints. So for the moment, I'm just going to delete the right hand side for the moment. And this just means that we can also start adding IKs on here and mirror across afterwards so it mirrors across the IK as well.